hi guys and welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a non-precision approach uh, onto VOR Runway 16 into Dublin. And we're going to use VNAV for the approach which is the preferred mode uh, used by my operator. Uh, we could also use vertical speed uh, but we're going to use v uh, VNAV for the purposes of this exercise today. Uh, firstly just before we start the tutorial I'd just like to say thank you uh, if you're one of the few people that subscribed um, since I started the channel 10 days ago, I've just got over 100 subscribers now. The feedback's been absolutely fantastic, and the comments have been very good, so keep them coming. If you have any suggestions or ideas, please feel free to, to um, contact me, and I'll uh, do my best to try and accommodate your requests. So, anyway, on to today's tutorial. So we're holding at uh, an initial approach fix for our runway 16 into Dublin. Uh, the code is Echo India Delta Whiskey, uh, and that waypoint's called Kerav. Uh, now I provided a link in the description to this approach, uh, it's off the AIP Island website uh, and it's the exact same uh, chart pretty much that I use for my company. It's about two years old, I'm actually using my Navtech chart app, it's a little bit up to date. All the frequencies minimum courses haven't changed so you can have a look at that link, it's the exact approach I'm flying. Um, so I've already completed the sensed approach checks, uh, I've already set up everything in the FMC for the approach. I'm just going to pretty much just step through what I've got set and it's been hold at 6,000 feet of Kerab. So the setup would have been done by the uh, pilot flying, typically done 100 miles before top of descent. We would have probably initially gone to the descent page, put in all the information here, uh, then gone to the forecast page, put in the information. As we're already in the hold, I haven't put any wind information, we've just put the forecast QNH1026. Our fixed wings in for runway 16 for our configuration, so 10 miles, we must have flat 1 selected. We're going to configure gear down flat 15 at 5 miles. Could do it at four miles in VMC, but just to give myself a chance today, uh, I'm going to configure at five miles. Nextly, we'd actually step through the chart and verify that we had all the uh, points in the FMC. Uh, so I'm just going to do that now. We'll go to plan page. There we go. Uh, starting at Kerab, which is the initial approach fix. Now, typically in real life, you get radar vectors, but I'm actually going to use the transition as if to kind of simulate that radar vectors was unavailable. So we're going to do the full procedure via Aruda and then to BAPTA. All these speeds and minimums match the chart, so we've got 3,000 feet or above by Baptist speeds, 180 knots. Uh, by Foxtrot Delta 116, we're going to be at 160 knots at 3,000 feet. Now this point here, Foxtrot Delta 16, is very important because if you have a look at the chart uh, and the link I've sent you, uh, this is called the FAF, it's the final approach fix. It's basically the point at which the uh, descent profile uh, begins on the uh, glide path down to the runway. And before this point, we have to get the aircraft configured ready for the VNAV approach. So before this, two miles before this point, we call approaching descent, we'll do that. And basically it goes from there, passing the VOR, which is what the procedure is based on. Uh, it's actually not on the airfield, if you have a look here. Uh, it's on the extended sense line at about 4.6 miles, well exactly 4.6 miles from the runway. We go overhead the VOR and then onwards to the runway. Uh, here's the missed approach from runway landing point to uh, MD16, then the missed approach which is straight ahead uh, to 3,000 feet, which is on the chart as well. So that's pretty much the approach we do. Uh, performance wise, I've already done the performance on the Boeing OPT app, but how would we do that? Go to progress page, we've got 3.2 tons on board, it says we're going to burn about another 100 kilos. By the time we go around another uh, time in the hold, it's going to be about two or 300 kilos. So what we do, we take uh, 300 kilos off this figure and we take that one, 300 kilos off this figure, sorry, so the landing weight is going to be about 58.1 turns. We'd insert that into the OPT app. It's quite a short runway to runway 16, we're going to use flat 40 and order break 3, uh, which is fine for the exit. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got the inbound courses set, uh, the minimums, ah, I didn't mention this, so if you have a look at the chart and the link I've sent you, uh, the minimums for this approach is 590 feet for a Category C aircraft, which is what a 737 is. Now what we do uh, in my company, and I don't know if this is a company or a uh, Boeing thing, we add 40 feet. Now the reason is the minimums for a non-position approach is called an MDA, which stands for Minimum Descent Altitude. We cannot go below this altitude on the approach and, uh, unless we're visual uh, to a landing. So by 6.30 we would initiate a go-around if we're not visual. That way we won't go below the Minimum Descent Altitude of 590 feet. Good, so we've already done the descent checklist. We then do something uh, to prepare for the approach. We check the frequencies which are there. We've got 1149 set, uh, the range rings which we've already briefed, and where we've got the uh, VOR identity for Dublin, so dub dub, and we've got dub dub this side now. Even though we're using LNAV and VNAV, we would technically need the VOR to be uh, functioning and be tuned for it to work. We have to because we're flying a VOR approach. So if the VOR became inoperative, the aircraft could still fly, but we couldn't legally do it, so we'd have to find an alternate. 
make sure the standby instruments are set we just confirm the courses are in there too so 16161 and then we do the approach checklist uh, which we have a look on here so uh, altitude instrument set crush checks approach change check and set and then this standby ADI we don't have in my company so that will be complete good so uh, let's say initially ATC gave us vectors before flying onto the approach so we'll break off here uh, they gave us a heading of 290 so we'll just go heading select now it's important it doesn't even matter if you're being radar back to an ILS approach that you keep updating the FMC so what could we do straight away to exit the hold we could just simply bring route up to the top check that it's there and then we execute it and there we go it's already generated a nice line there and the FMC is going to do set to date uh, after a few seconds it's going to develop a top descent and a deceleration point which it has done now and there we go so it's saying you can maintain 6,000 feet here We'll engage VNAV, so it'll accelerate back to 240 knots, which is the speed restriction for flight level 100. It's saying from the top of the descent, we can descend to 6,000 feet, decelerate for the speed restriction by Aruda, and if basically you follow all this, I'll try and do it with idle thrust uh, and maintain a constant descent onto the approach. Now, in reality, we'll probably get radar vectors onto this approach, uh, not to engage LNAV, uh, but we're going to just use LNAV just to make it simple so I can uh, precisely explain uh, what VNAV is doing. Uh, during the approach as well. Good, so the aircraft won't actually descend because we have 6,000 uh, feet here. So we'll say initially that ATC cleared us to uh, 4,000 feet. Now, now we set 4,000 feet, so the aircraft after reaching top of descent will start to descend to idle for a CDA. But if we push out into vent now, the aircraft will start descending automatically at a descent rate of 1,000 feet per minute until it recaptures the profile. Now this profile is only going to start coming back on profile after the top of descent point. I don't want to get too low, so what I can use is vertical speed and just reduce the rate of descent uh, to about 500 feet per minute so we can maintain a constant descent for this approach. Back into vertical speed then, we have to then control the speed uh, using the indicated airspeed. So I'll start reducing the speed now to a sensible speed at uh, the initial stage, which is about 220 knots. Uh, if you ever change the speed, it's important that you update it the FMC as well. So if I go to the descent page, it's telling me that the speed it's trying to maintain is 240 knots. Uh, I've got a cost index of 30 in there, which is 273. So if I put uh, 220 here as the target speed, execute. It'll now build a new profile based on us descending at 220 knots and it's going to generate a new deceleration point. So there it is, still fixed at 6,000 feet, but I've gone for an idle thrust descent. So if you look at the cruise window, it's empty. Uh, so I'm going to maintain 220 knots past the top descent inbound to Aruda and we'll match the heading bug as well. Good, so yeah, make sure you always keep the heading bug matched. In reality, ATC, if you're saying direct to Aruda, they may tell you, might tell you to maintain the present heading. All you have to do then is push heading select about uh, moving the heading bug as well. Remember, this is track up display, so our current heading of the aircraft uh, is about what's that 249 degrees. Our track's 259 degrees, so this is our track now. Uh, Good, so if I've already passed uh, the top of descent point, so all I'm going to do is reduce the rate of descent slightly to get back onto the profile. So there you go, you can now see the VNAV profile starting to come back into view. Uh, now once I get VNAV in, it's going to then start uh, complying with the speed restrictions. Now remember, uh, the speed restrictions aren't the priority for VNAV, it's the altitude. It's important that you change these altitudes to at and above, because if you leave that without the uh, A there for and above, it will be level up after. Uh, as I display, explained on my ILS approach, what the actual altitude we're going to be at at is here. Uh, well it should come up there. There we go, 3499, so 500 feet above. So that's what the actual aircraft's going to be. So we've already got one to go. Uh, let's say AC now cleared us to descend to 3000 feet and cleared us for VR runway 16 approach we've got established. So you make sure uh, that's set to go 3000 feet checked. And now what can we do? We're coming into the profile, we can engage VNAV. Now VNAV is going to then try to keep with all these altitude restrictions and all these speed restrictions. So this D cell point is going to go from our descent speed of 220 knots to try and make this restriction at 180 knots. Okay? So there's lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, as soon as it gets to D cell, it'll start bugging the speed to the up speed, and then we can start uh, expanding the flaps. It's important when you do that, you open the speed window so it reverts back to VNAV path. So there's a D cell point, there we go, it's gone straight to the up speed. What we recommend is that we uh, open the speed window now, and now the aircraft can initially go back to VNAV speed. As soon as I select flat one, 
it's going to go to VNAV path. Why does it do that? Because now the priority is to get back onto the path. So as soon as you start expanding the flaps, we'll do that. So approaching 10 miles, we'll do that. Reduce the speed uh, to the one bug speed, which is about 183 knots. There we go. It's going to fly direct to Papta now. And now it's going to descend on the path slightly climbing. That's not very realistic, but at least level off. Uh, catching the profile and then reducing to uh, the next speed as well. Good, so let's say AC's been very generous, it's very quiet in Dublin, they've already cleared us to land. What we do, we turn all the landing lights and taxi light on. The taxi light reminds us that we've been cleared to land, uh, otherwise I'll probably forget to do it later. Excellent, so VNAV's doing a good job on profile. Uh, speed's coming back nicely for the speed restriction, but obviously it's 180 knots at BAPTA, uh, so that's there. So what we could do is just go nicely to flaps 2. Uh, flaps 2 is slightly draggier, but that will allow us to bug 180 knots. Uh, there we go, without uh, doing that. So it is important we never bug less than the placard speed. So we can see it's flap 2. Uh, I can't bug any less than that. Uh, it must be at least the bug speed. So we'll just set the bug, flap 2 bug speed, which is 177. Now it's adding a little bit of thrust here to maintain the profile because it doesn't want to get low. It wouldn't actually do that to MC speed. speed. That would typically be on arm, and you could set the thrust manually using the thrust levers on the aircraft. Good, so we haven't levelled off from 6,000. Nice continuous descent onto approach. Now, we're into a little bit of cloud here. Now, whenever the temperature here is below 10 degrees on the TAT, which it is here, we use engine anti-ice, okay? So what we do, we turn the start switches to continuous, and then we turn the engine anti-ice on. We'd only ever use the wing anti-ice if we had a kind of moderate or severe icing, and you'd notice that it's quite hard to do it in the simulator. There'll be icing in real life on the wiper, or in this part of the windscreen here. Good, so establishing now on the final approach track, we can set runway heading, which is 161. That's now set. Next thing happens, uh, well, actually, we'll go to flat 5, because we've got the 160 knot speed restriction by uh, the FAF. Um, so we'll do that bug the flat 5 speed, 163. Uh, that'll do in uh, reality. So ATC will give you a speed restriction to comply with. Good, so the next thing we're doing, we don't want to level 3,000 feet, so two miles before the final approach fix, uh, what we do we call approaching descent, okay? If the speed's coming a little bit high, you can use flap 10 as well, so I'll go to flap 10, that's a little bit more draggy than 5 to get it out. At two miles, we'll say approaching descent, what do we do here? We set the uh, MDA to the nearest plus 100 feet, so 630, we set 700 feet. We verify if we didn't have already VNAF path, which it is, and we make sure the speed window is open as well. So speed into them, we say the speed window is open, we've got 163 knots. Next important point comes at what we call the FAF, uh, which is here, so we must make sure the FAF at the altitude uh, meets the restriction. So VNAV won't let you descend below 3,000 feet until you're past this point. So it might briefly level off. Let's have a look, see what it does. Alright, so there it is, FAF, and it's already gone past it, next restrictions are doubling 15, 70 feet. So what we'd say is FAF, uh, verify the altitude, which now is 2,900 feet, no flags, so no flags on here to verify this problem. And the pilot monitoring would say, yeah, the altitude checks on his side, and no flags. 2,500, we make sure that we have terrain on one of the NDs, the FO's got it there, and we'd say, yeah, terrain is noted. Next thing basically happens at 5 miles, gear down flat 15. So looking in the distance, we might just about see the runway there it is there okay good so that's pretty much the basics of the initial part of the non-precision approach VNAV is doing a fantastic uh, job uh, making sure on the profile maintaining this uh, angle of um, uh, the glide path angle of 3.14 degrees so the pilot monitoring during this stage will be doing distance altitude cross check so if you have a look at the chart it says overhead the Dublin VOR we need to be at an altitude of 15 65 feet and so on uh, at a distance of two miles from WVOR, we need to be at 2,205 feet. So here we go, two miles, check the chart, 2,180 feet. So we're slightly low on profile. Uh, it's always good to make sure you've got the correct Q&H if there's an error uh, with that. But bear in mind, if you do have the wrong Q&H, uh, the altitude distance cross checks would actually be technically correct. So it is very important to get the correct Q&H. So there's five bars now, so gear down, uh, flat 15, we do the landing check, there's the flap, so we start switches, we check the continuous, uh, speed brake, arm green light, landing gear, wait until we have down three green, there we go, order brake three set, holding at flaps, uh, oops, uh, so I forgot to match the speeds, so pilot monitoring will make any configuration, we're doing flat 40, so I'll initially go to flat 25, of the 25 speed, and slightly rough because we must be less than 162 knots before we select flat 40 there we go 160 knots we can go straight to flat 40 and the 
to be fully stabilized uh, by the top time of the, the amber are uh, amber sorry band at 500 feet for VMC approach so this is the next important point here so top of the white arc we've got to select the missed approach altitude it's important you oops open some more windows uh, we do this at this point so what we do now set the missed approach altitude at 3,000 feet if you don't do it at the right time it won't go to VNAP and carry on descending it will go to try and capture that altitude so missed approach altitude is now set 3,000 feet we've checked uh, flaps we make sure we've got 40 40 green light and then the landing lights we cleared to land landing lights are on we are in a, no longer in icing condition so you can just turn the anti-ice off the start switch as we leave and continues all right so next thing happens is basically uh, we disconnect and fly manually okay so you have to be visual by this point if not you must fly go around so i'm going to try my best approach let's have a look at the wind in dublin uh, 164 7 knots so it's nice and gentle uh, just a correction of plus five knots of view reference good so when we disconnect we must do something called recycling the flight directors uh, that's because in the event of a go around we need the guidance so i'm now going to disconnect the autopilot and the auto throttle and we've recycled the flight directors off to on uh, so in real life you shouldn't get the guidance and then i'll start to fly manually uh, at minimums we say land or go around so three reds i need to make a correction instantly uh, so i'm pitching up there's two reds from two whites so we can now start descending back onto the path uh, try and get the flight directors back on so in real life when you turn the flight directors back on the guidance disappears for some reason it's still there i'm actually going to turn it off because that's what it would look like in the real airplane good so now i'm flying um using two reds two whites get rid of that because i'm happy with the speed now small corrections and then what we do it should be over the threshold at 50 feet a little bit low 50. 40 at 20 feet we close the thrust levers yeah. we flare oh, not too great and then we touch down just inside the touchdown so much it's a bit of a long, uh, long landing so we let them select the speed brake which we've just done there idle reverse is fine oh i haven't got the deployed yet there we go idle reverse and then just get back onto the center line good oops didn't arm the speed brake Hopefully. there we go speed brakes now out and then we just disengage the order break and I've got another master caution I should think that's the thrust reversers which always seems to happen uh, on my FSX which doesn't happen in the real aircraft and then we can get rid of all the messages all right so that guys was it that was pretty much how you fly a non-precision approach uh, using uh, VNAV uh, based on a VOR approach you can put anything in the FMC and NDV approach it's done exactly the same way each time you locate the FAF two miles before you set the uh, MDA to the nearest plus 100 feet, harm VNAV, and it'll do that every single time perfectly. A little bit unrealistic in PMDG, when you recycle the flight director to off and then back on, the flight directors actually disappear and they will stay disappeared until you push toga. Good, so um, captain, if it was the FO flying, would have to hand over control to the captain, so I'll do the captain's cleanup whilst I'm taxi in. Uh, he turned the weather radar off, uh, stow the speed brake, uh, which I've already done, and turn off the retract lights and uh, on this aircraft as well the landing lights and any taxi uh, the FO would have his own actions now just because I've got a bit of spare time today I'm actually going to show you how to do the full shutdown and secure checklist and I'll show you what the FO's cleanup actions would be as well uh, vacating the runway so I'll just actually switch over to his side uh, I can't do this in real life taxi the aeroplane and flick switches you wouldn't do it as you remember it's a dual channel operation so I've just turned his strobes off okay uh, and what I'm basically going to do, I'm just going to park at the nearest stand. Let's go this way for the heck of it. Oh, let, let's cut across here. All right, I'm going to be very naughty. Uh, cut across the taxi line, so you'd never do this in real life, just to get to the nearest stand. That's the config warning horn, so if you put too much thrust on with the flaps or not in the correct takeoff configuration, you're going to get that warning horn. Oh, uh, I forgot to put the flaps up, so that's something the FO would be doing during his flow, but we'll talk about that get back onto stand and we'll now start the APU as well. That's now started. Just gonna follow the taxiway line to the nearest stand. Okay so yeah sorry about the drop in frame rates. Uh, all this you won't believe it's done on my Dell laptop so uh, it's not the most powerful machine that's why there's a slight drop in frame rates because um, uh, I'm using Dublin Airport scenery um, uh, so it's quite frame rate intensive. Here we go here's a close stand so we'll go back into the Oh, too much thrust again. It's very hard to control on the joystick. Good. So taxiing on to stand now. Uh, you can only ever taxi on to stand in real life if there's a marshaller there. 
or if you've got gate guidance which is that big uh, black stand right in front of you that tells you to slow down how many meters you've got left as well so uh, that's something to bear in mind uh, so i'll just do it manually uh, i'm just going to go as close as i can to the bridge oh, you would never come in this fast as well It'd be about four or five knots maximum and we'll bring it to a stop here and set the parking brake good so what we've got to wait for we've got to wait for the apu uh, to start and there we go it's ready so the blue light means uh, there's electrical power available but not powering the bus we do this the blue lights are now on the engine saying the engines are generating electrical power but they're not providing anything on the bus and when we do the shutdown checklist before we shut off the engines we verify we have two blues and one red uh, one red and then we say engine's dead immediately what he do is then uh, turn off the seatbelt sign and do that and I completely forgot to do the first officer's taxi in flow so this is what he would have done uh, turn the transponder to out off uh, flaps to up set the trim to four units system page initially and then engine page to check the engine instruments we would have turned the flight directors off uh, set the speed to this plus 100 this to the nearest plus 100 if you have a look at my ILS tutorial I'll explain why we do that they would have turned the engine anti-ice off which is already there and then the start switches so i've done this in the complete wrong sequence guys so just bear that in mind it is what an fo would do during the taxi and float so going back into the uh, f uh, captain's seat we'll carry on with the rest of his flow for the shutdown checklist okay so what would he do uh, after shutting down the check engines which he did he turned all the fuel pumps off except uh, this pump here the aft number one tank because that's providing fuel pressure for the ap if you did turn it off the ap would work fine but it just increases the service life of the ap to leave that on turn off all the window heats sorry the FO would have done that on the taxi and flow as well uh, the electric hydraulic pumps oh, a lot of button trouble today there we go air conditioning packs off and open now if you wanted to provide air conditioning from the APU uh, you turn the APU bleed on leave these packs on auto but as we're doing a full shutdown we wouldn't do the anti-collision light would go off when the N2 is below 20% and then he would call for once everything's complete and turn the anti-collision light off the shutdown checklist or full shutdown checklist now as much as i'd love to i cannot uh, read or show you my company shutdown checklist for obvious reasons so you can imagine that will be done after the flow screen complete and then we basically do the sh uh, secure checklist so the secure checklist we turn the fuel pump off um, as part of that checklist so don't forget that next thing we do we turn off the irs mode selectors which are here so they go straight to off that trips the yaw damper uh, next thing we do cabin utility IFE we actually leave on now as part of our new flow emergency exit lights we would turn to off and it's worth mentioning you should only do the secure checklist after all the passengers have vacated obviously want the emergency exit lights armed after that we verify the air conditioning packs are off the trim air is off we then turn off the APU or ground power so I've got the APU running uh, let's connect the ground power now if I can remember rightly it was this that one I think ground connections oh i remembered there we go ground power so you turn the ground power now if there was no gpu available you can turn off the apu if you're on a remote stand so we'll turn off the apu already uh, and then when we're doing the full shutdown checklist you turn off the gpu uh, which would trip it and then we just simply turn the battery to off and that is it then you'd go out uh, or in the case of my operator have a 45 minute turnaround and get ready for the next flight but that's what we do on the last flight of the day to shut down the aircraft Good, so that's it guys, that was a, as I said earlier, a uh, non-precision approach using VNAV to a VR approach and just for the heck of it I just showed you how to do uh, a bit out of displacement the um, the uh, full shutdown checklist, but as you remember it's a multi-crew environment so the first officer would have completed those actions during taxiing whilst you were taxiing the aircraft and then we did the full secure checklist so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've got lots of things planned for this um, channel, so I'm going to be doing some full tutorial flights from A to B, from cold and dark, uh, complete the flight again to a full secure checklist explaining everything we do in real life. I'm going to be looking at non-normal situations like engine failures in time, uh, which I need to practice doing in PMDG. It's quite difficult uh, with just a joystick, but uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please uh, leave it in the comments section. Um, also going to look at some non-normal scenarios like uh, balancing fuel, how and when we use engine anti-ice, etc, etc. And also going to probably do some live streams uh, in the not-so-distant future. So if you haven't done already, uh, i really appreciate if you could subscribe, like the video, and please feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to answer any questions about 737 operations. I hope you really enjoyed this video again, and once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.